Hi, everybody. If you're here live or watching the replay, um, my name is Ashley and I cook over at Big Flavors from a Tiny Kitchen. And this is a class with the Rye Free Reading Room. It's the last of our Cook It Together program for now. We're going to come back in the fall. So my kitchen is very tiny and very hot in the summer, and I can't do cooking classes with lights and sun and no air conditioning that reaches here. So um, today we're going to make Vietnamese fresh spring rolls with shrimp and peanut sauce. You can absolutely sub any cooked protein that you like, chicken, tofu, you can leave it out. Um, if you don't like shrimp, I know a lot of people aren't into shrimp necessarily. Um, if you have any questions, my class is always very laid back, uh, unless you're watching this live and I can't respond, but you can feel free to reach out um, over social media um, at Big Flavors and I'll happy to answer questions, but um, you can always unmute and ask or type it in the chat. I'm happy to answer anything that comes up related to this recipe or like tangentially related. I'm always fine with that too. So um, the first thing, I'm gonna show you two different brands. Uh, the noodles that we're gonna put inside, sometimes they're called bean threads. This is one brand, this is the one I'm gonna use today. And this is nice because these are separated into little two ounce bundles. Also sometimes called rice sticks or vermicelli. There's tons of different brands. I found these at Stop and Shop, like just regular grocery store in the Asian aisle. So um, these ones I think I got from H Mart, but the directions are different on all of them. So when deciding if you need to boil water, take a look. Some you only have to soak in like warm water. These ones, um, uh, you have to boil for three minutes. These ones you, cover with boiling water and let stand for 10 minutes. So I'm just gonna fill up some water in this pot and let it come to a boil. And basically this recipe is a lot of chopping things up while you're waiting for the noodles to cook. I like to get everything um, arranged. I usually use like a quarter sheet pan or a big plate and kind of do rows of the different filling ingredients. Um, that way when you go to assemble, it just makes it a lot easier. Uh, and the shrimp, if you're looking for um, a way to add some flavor, you can use pre-cooked shrimp, which is totally fine. Um, but if you're looking for a way to kind of add a little extra flavor, um, there's a shrimp boil recipe on my website with the killer shrimp cocktail. And there's also another recipe with uh, Vietnamese style shrimp sandwiches with peanut sauce. And they're both kind of the same premise. So you take, you boil up some water with some seasonings in it. So for what I did today, uh, I did a bay leaf and some peppercorns and an onion um, and smashed up garlic clove and a lemon and just boiled everything together for 10 minutes before I put the shrimp in. So it gives the water a lot of flavor and then drained it and put it in an ice bath. And then I just kind of stuck it in here to keep in the fridge. Um, these shrimp are kind of small today, so I'm probably gonna use more than I normally would in the spring rolls, but you can add as much as you like when you make them. When I do, uh, I'm gonna use some of these shrimp for a shrimp cocktail, um, probably tomorrow. So I didn't add the star anise, but I like doing that for Asian dishes usually, it just adds a nice flavor. Uh, and when you flavor the water first, it it really gets the flavor of those ingredients into your shrimp, so it doesn't just taste like boiled shrimp. But shrimp will work. We got enough, a lot of other flavors going on. So my bean threads. This is a two ounce bundle, so this should be enough to make about eight of the spring rolls. Um, you can always keep these if you want to cook extra ones. Um, they hold up in the fridge. I like toss a little seasoned rice vinegar in them and you can make like a salad if you're feeling too lazy to actually roll the spring rolls. Um, big bowl, some of these cold noodles and all the toppings and then you don't have to fuss with it. That's totally uh, easy also. Um, so the peanut sauce, uh, I wrote peanut oil on the list but it can be any type of oil that you have. I just have a small saucepan. You just want something that can do um, like a higher heat. So peanut oil, grapeseed oil, that's what I have, avocado, sunflower seed. I used to use peanut oil a lot, but I know a lot of people, I mean, obviously this recipe has peanuts in it, but a lot of people have 
peanut allergies. So I was trying to lessen how much of that I use in case I have a friend coming over and I don't think about it because it's just oil in a bottle. Um, so I'm gonna put this over like medium heat. And then we need about three tablespoons of finely chopped onion. I know Rob doesn't do onions and garlic, which are present in most of my recipes. So feel free to leave these out if you need to. I don't know what I would substitute though. Um, maybe a little ginger, just so you have something a little, a little more going in there. Um, I can't remember if you told me you're good with like the powdered like onion powder and garlic powder, or if that's also kind of off limits for you, I don't remember. I'm just gonna kind of chop it up kind of small. Need about, I have about half an onion here. I have it left over from something else. So I want about three tablespoons. It doesn't have to be real pretty. You can just chop it up. Um, and if, if the peanut butter that you have at home is really sweet, um, you might need, do we put sugar? We put sugar in here, but I use unsweetened peanut butter that we just make with peanuts in my house. Um, you can absolutely just use peanut butter that's got sugar in it already, and you might want to taste it, adjust it later. Uh, I'm going to mince a clove of garlic. Uh, and these can be made ahead of time. Uh, I like making a big batch of them and then I keep them on a tray with like a damp towel just to keep them from sticking to each other. That's a kind of nice way to make sure that all this work of rolling and everything isn't just for one day <laughs> unless, unless you're entertaining. Um, they do look super impressive. You can make them earlier in the day or the day before and then you can uh, not have to do as much work. Mincing this garlic. Um, have you eaten? I'm just curious. Have you eaten this these uh, type of spring rolls before? I have. Yeah. Do you prefer the the ones like this with the fresh, like the wet kind of sticky rice paper, or the um, deep fried kind? I like both. Yeah. I, I, I we we used to go to a place uh, nearby that did the the fresh ones mm -hmm. with uh, steak in them. Oh yeah, like really a bulgogi good. type or just uh, like Vietnamese style of steak. I uh, I missed that. What was is it like the like uh, bulgogi type of steak, like the Korean? Oh um, or just curious. I know I you think can... it was filet mignon actually. <laughs> Bougie, I like it. <laughs> they, they had pho with with filet mignon too. Oh, that's awesome. Expensive. Uh, <sighs> yeah, that's. It's, does it get well? I guess no, because if it's thinly sliced and just cooked on top, I guess that doesn't really lose the specialness of it. I'm just putting this in the hot oil over here, uh, and it only needs to cook for like this hot oil. I don't want it to get like burnt. I might turn my heat down a little bit. Um, I'm gonna throw a pinch of red pepper flakes in there too, and this doesn't make it too spicy if you're not into spicy food. Um, you can use a small pinch or you can leave it out. But I like a little pinch of pepper flakes in there. Um, onion, garlic, red pepper, and cook. I wrote cook stirring until pale gold in about four minutes, but with how fast this is sizzling up today, like it's already starting to get translucent there. I'm gonna let it go a little bit more. the sauce is great. I, I used it like as a salad dressing recently too. It thinned it out a little bit. It was very good. Um, we're going to need a quarter cup plus two tablespoons of water. So I'm just going to get that ready. Real fast today. All right, so there's the onions. They're already nice and soft. I'm going to put in this water. That'll kind of make everything settle down for a moment. I'm going to add in two tablespoons of creamy peanut butter. You could use chunky if you like, or if that's what you have. Top a little tricky to come off sometimes. 
we uh we make peanut butter in a blender and then vacuum seal the top <laughs> and it stays nice and fresh in the pantry without solidifying and you know in the fridge if you use like a natural style peanut butter it gets kind of difficult to work with um so just two tablespoons of this We're going to do the same two tablespoons of hoisin sauce. Um, there's a lot of different brands of hoisin. I'll show you the one that just happens to be my favorite. Um, I, and I only say this because I tried another brand once that was, I really, I really didn't like the flavor of it, but I use this one, um, Lee Kung Ki. Um, I've seen it at most like standard box uh, supermarkets in this area at least. Ooh, do I have enough poison? See, I must have another bottle. Let's see if I have one more in my pantry. A lot. This would be good on steak and uh, rolls like that too, Rob. Boy, I'm in yon with. Uh, yeah. Another one. On deck. Ready to go. <laughs> Listen, I, I can't mess around. I, it's like I ran out of mayo once ever because my husband likes mayo a lot and a lot of things. And I was like, never again. <laughs> Let's see, now you get to watch me plus with trying to open a jar. You can use a can opener underneath. I have to I was gonna say I might have to do that. There's like a little lip and if your can opener's got this, this little hook thing over here, uh, you can kind of anchor it underneath and use that and that'll kind of release the seal. Um, sounds a lot more ominous than it does release the seal. If I was out of this, I would probably end up using a little bit of oyster sauce. That would be a good swap. I would not make the recipe just because I didn't have that. Oh, uh, good. So yeah, if you're gonna use ginger, I wouldn't use um, a ton because ginger can be quite potent. But um, yeah, I feel like there, there's gotta be some other good things that you can add if you can't do onions and garlic. Um, peanut butter hoisin, I'm gonna add two teaspoons of tomato paste. I think since the last time you were in one of my classes, I have a motion detector sink now. Pretty great. And my water's boiling. I'll have to be. I'm going to do two bundles of these, I think, so I have some extra. It just says to cover them with boiling water for 10 minutes. So. They soften up really easily. Some of them you only need to soak in cold water, so it really just depends on the brand. Alexa, set a timer for 10 minutes. Sorry if you have one and it just went off. Um, <laughs> it works when um, when people cook along because they don't have to set theirs. I set it for them unintentionally. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, over there yet. All right, so two teaspoons of tomato paste. This really kind of makes it richer. Um, I use tomato paste in my fajitas too, which have a lot of onions, but you can use all peppers. <laughs> um, but yeah, just kind of something about when you cook with tomato paste, it really makes everything like just a little bit more like bold somehow. Absolutely. Uh, and then how much sugar? Three quarters of a teaspoon of sugar. Just regular granulated sugar. If you like, I said, if your peanut butter is already sweet, you might not need this. It's not going to hurt. It's not that much sugar. Um, you could use like a tiny bit of agave or maple syrup if you wanted. Uh, all right, this is going to go back on the heat. Um, I'm just going to whisk it. It's actually it's pretty much cooked, but um, I'm just going to whisk it together and let it let it cook for like a minute or two until it kind of comes together. Oh, and hi, Scarlett, if you're watching this on the replay. And 
know you were bummed to not make it today, but I hope you enjoy these when you do make them. All right, so the sauce is the messiest part. Now we're just gonna chop things. You could also, if you didn't wanna bother making peanut sauce, which I hope you do, but if you don't wanna bother, you could just dip in a little bit of poison. I think that would be perfectly delicious as well. Okay. Sorry, I just once it once it kind of comes together it looks smooth. I'll just put it out into a bowl to kind of cool off a bit. But that's it's really easy to make. It smells really good. Um, it's great on grilled chicken. We do like skewers, tofu, shrimp, um, probably other non meaty meats substitutes. So have you worked with Napa cabbage before? I have. I want to know. Fries. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The shrimp one? Uh, I've done shrimp, chicken, yeah. I have a, it's great in stir fries because it bulks it up without adding a bunch of carbs and stuff. I found this, it was labeled Napa cabbage. Didn't look like Napa cabbage, but it was the second store I had gone to. You can use regular cabbage in the recipe if you want. It said Napa cabbage. The cashier was like, is this bok choy? I said, Napa cabbage. She said, that's bok choy. I said, I don't know. It said Napa cabbage. What do you think? That looks more bok choy. It looks more like bok choy, but the leaf, because I actually, I have some baby bok choy in the fridge. Um, so it's like, gosh, Shanghai, like the leaves, the leaves on these look like Napa cabbage because they're crinkly and they're lighter. So I don't know, whatever it is, it's going in this one. It's going to be delicious. <laughs> yeah, it'll be good. Um, and you can, you know, any type of veggies or meats that you want to use, you can sub anything in this recipe. I think it would be good. Um, Usually, if you're looking for Napa cabbage, it's kind of like a football shape, and this is like really pe tightly packed. So I don't know exactly what this is, but we're gonna work with it. Um, and I'm cabbage. gonna use the rest of it in another night this week. Um, give me a taste egg roll in a bowl recipe, which I haven't tried before, but I've heard wonderful things from many people about it, and it calls for Napa cabbage. So, and the baby bok choy. That's why I have that. Um, I'm just gonna like slice this till I get how much do I need ish like what did I say on my recipe uh half a cup thank you oh what is this even on yes half a cup uh, but the amounts are all approximate um I just get a big pile of everything because you can kind of add as needed um I was gonna make the egg roll on a bowl tomorrow but I should brag for a minute. I'm going to go see Paul McCartney, like an actual Beatle. I'm very excited. I haven't been to a big concert in quite a while, so I'm very excited about it. So, like I said, I've got this is a quarter sheet pan. Any big tray you have, I just kind of line up the rows of ingredients so I can, when I'm making them, I can just grab a little from each. I've got that. Um, I put red leaf lettuce on the list. If you can't find it, that's fine. It doesn't have to be red leaf. It just looks pretty. And I threw some uh, on paper towels in here with it because it was a little wet from the store. So I'm just going to take off a couple leaves and you can see they're a little, it says red. They're kind of purple, kind of brown. I actually planted some of this this year in my garden. So I'm curious to see how that goes. If there's a big, uh, rib in there, you can just kind of slice on both sides to take it out and you can snack on this or put it in a compost bin and throw it in the garbage if that's how you roll. I do not judge. Do whatever works for you. And again, I'm just slicing. Um, Thai basil is one that I wasn't able to find this time. I didn't go to H Mart. Um, but Thai basil is basically, it's kind of like a more licorice-y version of the standard basil that you would get at the store. Um, so 
So I'm going to use, I have purple basil from my garden. I have purple basil and regular basil, and then mint and plus cilantro. That's what's in my fridge still. Not like I was forgetting. Wait, is it? No, it's in the, <laughs> it's not. It's here. <laughs> um, so any pressure if you like, but I think that mint, basil, and cilantro work particularly well with this type of cuisine. It's gonna peel the leaves off. You could honestly leave the leaves whole if you wanted to, or just like kind of tear them. You don't have to make it all fussy or anything. Are you growing anything this year? I am growing nothing this year. Oh yeah, you have wildlife. I have deer. Yes, yeah. I mean, they're lovely to look at, but man, are they jerks when it comes to the gardens. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, eh, I'm just going to leave. Maybe the bigger leaves I'll just rip in half. I'm not going to bother slicing them up. So, pile of basil. I have um, herbs and like two tomato plants. And that's it. Yep. Wow, a couple flowers. Um, I've seen a little bunny on the patio, but I think he's just in my neighbor's stuff so far. And I figure if he ends up eating my lettuce, I'm supporting the local ecosystem, so it's fine. So no okra, huh? No, you know, I, I really was tempted, but I just don't have the space for it here. Um, so hopefully one day if I move and have more space and I get light on more than just the east and west sides of my house, It'll be a little more friendly to try some more interesting growings. Um, cilantro. Again, there's no exact amount you need of each of these things. Just if you run out, you can always chop some more. Cilantro, the stems are fine to eat. You don't have to like cut them out, unless they're really thick at the bottom. I'm just going to kind of like roughly chop. Stem of cilantro in there. A lot of green stuff here. I'm gonna do like a couple green onions. I'm probably gonna do three. Um, if you had like colorful bell peppers, would I have some in the fridge? I'm, sometimes I end up doing that. Like I'll just use random things that I have left. Um, it makes a nice little portable snack. Green onions, I'm just thinly slicing. If you want them to be fancy, you can thinly slice on an angle and then they look a little nicer, but they're going to be tucked inside of the roll so I can still be fine. Okay. And then I think we just need the carrots, is that? And the shrimp. Um, mint, basil, cabbage, cilantro. Yeah, carrot. All right. Um, you don't have to peel carrots. You can if you if they look particularly kind of funky on the outside or whatever, you can peel them, but they have a lot of nutrition in the skin. So I think I mean, let's just stop. show you these noodles. They've been soaking for 10 minutes now. Have you worked with these noodles before? I have not. Okay. So they're nice and pliable now. So I'm going to drain them and rinse them under cold water to keep them from continuing to cook. So these are not the same as like for, for pho? I'm sorry? Are these the same noodles for pho or? Uh, yeah, you can, you can use these in that too. I think, I'm trying to think, it's been a while since I've made it at home. I'm trying to think if I use these same ones. Yeah, I think so. Um, I'm going to make Thai again. It's been a while. I'm just kind of shaking off. I did the cold water on them so that they're cool now. And then I'm just kind of shaking them off. And then because they will kind of start to stick a little bit, um, I splashed some seasoned rice vinegar on. Um, how much do I say? A tablespoon. So just to show you the difference, if you only have one, that's fine. If I were going to only buy one, I would probably buy regular unseasoned. 
the seasoned rice vinegar, in addition to vinegar, has sugar and salt. Uh, if you make sushi rice, splashing this on the rice is what gives it that flavor. So the seasoning is pretty nice. Uh, so just about a tablespoon. And I'm going to toss them around and then we'll be at the ready. Folks, them and it gives them a nice flavor. That's ready. Just a lot of like get all the things in place and then we get to roll. Um, I'm gonna grate some carrots. I actually learned recently that the reason if you're making carrot cake, I made some for Easter, you should not buy the already shredded carrots. The texture is kind of different and it'll make your cake bitter. That was interesting. I usually have a bag of carrots in various states of freshness in the fridge. So it doesn't take too long to shred. If you wanted to do a bunch, you could, um, if you have the little dial, uh, not dial, plate on your food processor that you can put in that grates things, it would be like one, two, three, it'd be super fast to use. Gonna get a decent amount ready. I can always grate more later. Ooh, once I get my shrimp, I think we're ready to to assemble. All right. So for the shrimp, um, if you're making eight of these. Or if you're making 16, 16, eight servings, 17. Okay, Miss. Oh, I said eight shrimp. Okay, these shrimp are not big enough. So um, I'm going to do cut them in half. I'm doing math on my head right now. So we cut them like where the little split is, where the vein was. We're going to cut through this way to split them. So normally, if your shrimp are extra large or bigger, you would just put two on each rice paper round. I think because these are a little smaller, I'm going to put three on each. So I'm going to do eight, 12, I'll do 12 shrimp. I think this would be fun too with kids to let them kind of like mix and match what they put inside. Um, stuff tastes better to kids sometimes if they get a hand at me. It. And I have seen some people do like dessert kind of spring rolls with the rice paper um, that look really pretty with like kiwis and strawberries and all sorts of different produce. Oh, there's one that I left the shell on by accident. So in case you need to know, I, I peeled these first and then I cooked them, but um, you just kind of, this shell is split already and it's been deveined. Um, you can usually save money by buying ones that aren't already peeled for you, uh, if that matters to you. Um, so you would just kind of peel the shell back and you can pinch where the tail is attached and kind of slide that out and then the shell should pop right out. And if you make homemade seafood stock, you could save the shells. Um, along with, you know, you could repurpose your onion ends and carrot stem ends and all that kind of stuff. So let's go with this amount of shrimp for now. I'm going to put the rest of my back in the fridge. I'll make cocktail sauce recipe that I'm going to make for the rest of these guys. Okay, so all of our pieces, components are ready. The sauce is still cooling. Um, I'm just going to clean off my board so I have a nice clean work surface. And I have, just because the packaging can be really different, I, I brought a couple rice paper rounds that I have in my kitchen to show you. Because sometimes I'll see a new one, I'm like, oh, I need to try that. So this, this is one that I already have open. Sometimes it comes in a little like carton like this. I tape the sides shut in between uses just so they don't fall out. Um, so this is a standard one. I'm gonna try these ones also today. I've got brown rice paper. I've never seen them or eaten them. So I figured it'd be nice to try. 
And then sometimes they come in a pack kind of like this, like tortillas, and you just peel the top off, depending, like this one I think was from HMART, so um, the instructions are not in English. If you have Google Translate on your phone, you can hold it up and it can translate for them, but they're pretty easy to work with. And it should be the same, unlike the uh, noodles, it should be the same to work with regardless of what brand. So the first one might be ugly. It's okay, it'll still taste good. I'm gonna take a plate that's wider than my wrappers, that's a little bit deep, and I'm just gonna fill it with warm water. Actually, I saw a video today of somebody making um, a bunch of different snacks with rice paper. And one of the things that he did was to fry them in oil and they puff up kind of like shrimp chips, which I didn't know they did. So I'm, I'm excited to maybe try that with some of these various rice papers that I have. It's making room on my tiny kitchen counter. Um, Okay, so warm water, we might need to refresh it every once in a while. You want to work with one of these spring roll skins at a time because you need to soak it in water for just a few seconds until it gets pliable. Uh, it's so good last time. Okay. So they're, all right, this one's a little broken, so I'll show you on this. They're um, really crispy, like they're brittle. So they snap really easily. But once you soak them in water, they get nice and pliable. So you're gonna take one round. Yeah, it's kind of on camera there. Just gonna put it in the water and you just meditate with it and just let it let it hang out and see when it starts to soften, which happens pretty quickly. Like right now, it's a little bit more pliable, but it still feels crinkly to me. So I like to leave it until it no longer feels crinkly when it starts to feel more like fabric. That's usually when you're good. Cool up very fast. Um, the other thing that I like to make sure is that I put the shrimp colored side down so that that pink is on the outside of the roll at the end because I think it looks nicer, but you don't have to. But I've learned through, through trial and error a few little things that make it better. So we're getting there, it's like almost, but it's still a little bit crinkly. Sometimes this happens in like five seconds, you never know. Like based on the humidity and the <laughs> position of the planets or whatever. All right, so I think now it's feeling crinkly like fabric. You can see it's very, it sticks to itself. Um, but if it rips, it's fine. Just trying to lay it out as flat as I can. Okay. And it's kind of like rolling a burrito. Um, I'm going to do three shrimp. If you have bigger shrimp, I would just do two, but I'm putting them the pink cooked side. Well, it's all cooked. The side that looks like a cooked shrimp down. So I'm going to do three of those. And then I like to do something. I used to do the noodles next, but I found that if you do like the dark green things on top of that, it kind of looks cooler because it gives the shrimp something to pop off of. I'm doing some of the mint leaves, put as many or as few as you like, some of the basil, stem it up. not that it wouldn't be delicious because it would, some carrot, and just kind of sprinkling everything on, on top, cilantro, red lettuce, and my possibly Napa cabbage to be determined, I don't know. I don't even know if it would taste like. Hmm, does that taste like cabbage? I don't know. Now I need to get an actual nap of cabbage and try it raw and see. I'm really not sure. Um, let's get this here. Grab a little bit of these noodles. We don't want to like overstuff them, but we definitely want to have a little substance to them. And I make extra noodles. Those just kind of bulks them up. All right, so I like to do one side. For, I have it in the bottom kind of half slash third down there. So 
So I like to fold one side over. I'm kind of pulling everything down as I'm tucking it. Just the first one, which is going to be special. Yeah, ripping a little bit. A little finicky. It's so worth it when they get to eat them. So I kind of go gently so it doesn't tear too much. All right, she's not the prettiest, but we'll do we'll do another one. This on a plate. I'm gonna dampen these uh, kitchen towels to just kind of give it something to not stick to. Because if you put it on a platter, it's fine, but it will stick a little bit. I suppose you could put maybe a little bit of sesame oil. It's like a very, very little layer of sesame oil down that might be way to do it. That's that's our trial one. I'm gonna get warmer water. That might be part of it. It's like once you get into the groove of it, then you run out of our table. I have seen other like shapes of folding too. You could fold them um, a little like triangles if you wanted, and they're kind of open. The uh, one of the Vietnamese restaurants out here does um, fajitas, like Vietnamese fajitas, and they serve these rice paper rounds with something in between each, uh, so like lettuce in between each layer to keep them separated, um, which would be good on the bottom of the platter too. And then they give you fillings that you can put on top, like grilled meats and fresh herbs and some of the noodles. So again, it's like starting to get a little crinkly. Um, the other dipping sauce that you can make for this, I'm not going to today, but um, it is a quarter cup of water, two tablespoons of fresh lime juice, two tablespoons of sugar, and four teaspoons of fish sauce. Um, with a clove of garlic and a uh, half a teaspoon of chili garlic sauce in a small bowl. That one's a little tangier. It's not for everybody. I think peanut sauce is more universally adored, but it's, it's also, it's a good option. I'll sometimes make both if I'm having for this. All right, so I got my shrimp, mint, basil, lettuce, cilantro, and if you end up, oh, I forgot the green onions in the last one, green onions. If you end up forgetting something in one of them, it's not a big deal. Um, and you could, if you had like leftover grilled chicken, I think that would be good in here. This chicken goes really nicely with peanut sauce. Noodles, we'll see if I can roll it better this time. And these get a little unwieldy for you. Um, my kitchen scissors, you can just use kitchen scissors and that helps too much. Let's try this again. I'm going to do the bottom first this time and tuck everything down. I'm just tucking it to kind of get it to wrap it, make it a tight package. One side. These are not cooperating with me today. You can still make it work. That is the good thing is that, the bad thing and the good thing is that they stick to each other, to themselves, sorry. So you can rescue things that have gone kind of wrong. You know what? I wonder if it's this package of, of uh, rice paper. Can you try the, can you try the brown rice paper? I've had that one for a while, so that might be, not expired, but that might be the deal. I'm curious how translucent this will be. I'm not saying that it's healthier or anything. It's not really
So normally if you're like first time you're making them, give yourself a, a couple for practice. Um, it's getting pretty clear. It's kind of like when you're decorating cupcakes, sometimes like the first one, you're just like getting the hang of the piping bag and everything. I gotta say these are not my finest work, but um, for a salad, if you did a pile of those noodles with the seasoned rice vinegar on them and just topped it with a little bit of everything, you could throw a throw the peanut sauce on top, or you could toss it all together in a bowl. That might be nice. All right, let's try this again. Shrimp upside down. All of the fillings. The fresh herbs are really, really nice with this too. Very summer-like. I think it would be good for like the beach. Let's try this brown rice cooker. It feels better. I think my rice cooker may have been old. There we go. There she is. Okay. Sorry about that. So you can't see them through it quite as much, but they're still in there. Um, still looks cool. But yeah, definitely a lot neater of a package than the first two that I did. Um, so that's really all there is to making this recipe. Um, it does take a little time just because of the prep of all the parts, but you could prep everything um, ahead of time keep it in the fridge. You can even have like a spring rolling party. That would be kind of fun and everybody can be responsible for their own potential <laughs> uh, tight or not tight rules. Um, yeah, I'll do one more. I'll let you go on with your day. Um, I have, so this is the last one with the rye figurine for this season. Um, I have a class with the Asanang Library next Tuesday, June 21st at 6 p.m. Eastern. Um, we're making a chicken salad with dill and veggie cream cheese roll-ups. There's some recipes that um, we're doing like a picnic theme this month. So there's some recipes that I like bringing when we go on picnics. So that'll be that class. And then I'm going to be off teaching until, not teach, like off from teaching until September. And I do have stuff booked for September through December already, um, but that'll be, I'll post it on my website once I've finalized which particular recipes we're making. Um, but we're always, if anybody has a grant request, we're always open to that. Um, I know summer gets a little crazy trying to plan things, so appreciate you being here. And let me know if you do make these, um, tag me online at Big Flavors, I'd love to see them. I built this one crooked because I was just looking that way, but oh yeah, this rice cake was much better. The first time actually that I made a fresh spring roll recipe, I was with my friend um, and we were using ingredients from her garden and we got so busy talking that we completely forgot to put the noodles inside. So that's how I kind of came up with like making a salad of it and having the noodles on the side which worked out pretty well. So there we go. And when you cut into them, or if you cut into them, they do look really pretty, but they're a little unwieldy. So if you're trying to do a platter and have them cut open, it makes it a little tricky to eat, but definitely doable. Um, any questions, comments, cries of concern? <laughs> you look great. Thank you so much. I wish I could share them with you, although you did have that pit beef sandwich rec more recently than me, which I'm very jealous of. <laughs> I've dreamt about, uh, if you've not been to Ocean City, Maryland, and you ever find yourself there, this place called Bull on the Beach, they make these pit beef sandwiches that are like, we didn't used to do land animals in Ocean City because it's a seafood place, but oh my gosh, it's so good. <laughs> it's like the perfect meal. Um, thank you so much for joining. I appreciate you stopping by um, and I hope you find a delicious dinner to have for yourself. There you go. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.